All right, the Backstreet Boys are back on stage with the show in Las Vegas. The band has sold 130 million records worldwide since it started in the 1990s. Vladimir Dutier of our streaming network, CBSN, caught up with the band at Planet Hollywood Hotel and Casino. Just minutes away from takeoff. <laughs> Backstage with the Backstreet Boys, where three nights a week... Time to get buckled in. They arrive in five floating screens. All the hits from the past were taken. 22, 22 songs. Hits. Yes, you know, helping our fans reli relive some of their, the history with us. AJ, you guys, your moves are still sharp as ever. <laughs> but you've all, we've all gotten a little older. <laughs> True. Does performing the moves make you feel your age, or does it take you back to being a kid? Me personally, I've had two knee surgeries. Kevin had knee surgery. One of the many things I think that has helped us kind of stand the test of time is that we are performers. We're a bunch of hams. We're gonna keep dancing until we literally need walkers and, or, or like wheelchairs, and we just can't <laughs> do it anymore. The Backstreet Boys first got together in Orlando, Florida back in 1993. Kevin was the oldest at 21. Nick was just 13. But I just remember how hard it was being in a warehouse where all these blimp parts were stored. There was no air conditioning in there. We didn't get the lottery ticket. We got a chance to have a lottery ticket. And we worked really hard to make that dream come true. But my love is all I have to give. Without you, I don't think I can live. Their music was slow to catch on. It was the early 90s. Grunge overshadowed pop music. So the boys went to Europe, and the girls went crazy. Quit playing games with my heart. In 1997, Quit Playing Games became their first hit in America. It climbed to number two on the charts and ignited Backstreet Fever. Those girls who once screamed and dreamed of a close encounter are now grown up and showing up in Vegas. Hi. Hi. Nice to meet you. Their show is selling out. And the world's best-selling boy band is now better equipped to handle the trappings of too much too soon. In 2001, after nearly eight years of constant touring, AJ McLean revealed he was addicted to drugs and alcohol. Through the years, McLean has been in and out of rehab several times. I'm sober today, that's all I can say. It will always be a constant struggle, no matter what. And I have an awesome support team with my wife and my family, with my work family. I do hope and I do think at some point I will string together many, many years. But, and that's just me being completely honest. And Brian Luttrell is opening up about his struggle with muscle tension dysphonia. Triggered partly by stress, it causes the muscles around the voice box to constrict, impairing his vocal range. Latrell tried to hide his condition from the group. What about the vocals on I songs? Mean, Are we going to talk about that? Even Are we going to talk the about the fact that you don't necessarily sound voice. as good as you used to? He secretly entered therapy. My voice is, you know, it's my life. The guys learned about it two years ago when Latrell shared his problem with the documentary film crew. It's frustrating. It's very frustrating because I want to. You know, I just want to be me. You watched this movie together, and a whole bunch of stuff came out that you didn't even... Oh, yeah. We were sitting oh, yeah, there yeah. crying yeah. in the theater, just just yeah. affected. It only started to happen as you got older. It's been happening for, like, six years, I want to say. And if I had gotten it earlier, you know, I might be doing better today. But I think I'm onward and upward. I'm... I'm moving, moving forward. I'm not afraid of you anymore. Hey, Dude, hey. what, what were you worried about? The way that you guys were going at each other is the way that real family members yeah. actually fight. It's true. I mean, we've yeah. had, we've had more <laughs> fights than that over the years, but physical. just that were never publicized. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Him and I you know, have had the most physical fights. And, and 
<laughs> and <laughs> recently, we oh. not of it. I mean, we, like, <laughs> <laughs> no, we, we are a family. We are a family. Yeah. And their family has grown. They're all married with eight kids between them, and no surprise, the Backstreet Babies are growing into fans. My oldest is a, is a total performer, just like her dad, and has a big, big crush on this one. Really? Every time she asks, Daddy, did you guys do this today? Did you see Brian? back move? <laughs> and where's Brian? Where's Brian? Where's Brian? <laughs> The Backstreet Boys plan to release a new single this summer. As you saw, the guys are all family men now, and I noticed most of their fans brought their boyfriends, husbands, even their parents to the show. It's one of those things, you know, you, you, I wasn't a huge fan growing up because they're a little younger, but when I'm in the audience, everybody was doing the Backstreet. Everybody's singing it. It's great. It, you they're know? still doing it. I think that's wonderful. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Vlad. Thank you, Vlad. People still show, show up to see them. Thanks a lot.